what do you find boring in scripture? The, the number one thing people tell me they find boring, and I understand why, is genealogies. Right, yeah. <laughs> now let's, an, let's analyze why that is. You come in from outside of Judaism, mm -hmm. and you're like, good heavens, I feel like I'm tripping over my own tongue trying to pronounce these names. And when someone's reading, the person who asks them to read, hey, just, just skip over those names, though. I know it's difficult right, to say yeah. those names. These people have been dead for 4,000 years. It doesn't, right. like, what do I do with that? You know? <laughs> I understand that impulse, but it's not good to do because there's an underlying theological premise and you're screwing actually with the covenants when you do that. Last night at the dinner table, my very vocal seven-year-old son, we're talking about names and the importance of names, and his middle name is Levi. So he's Benjamin Levi, and we did that on purpose because he is the son of a Levi. So Ben being son, Levi. Yep. His sister's name is Holly Joy. Mm -hmm. And him in the moment thinking he's missing out said, oh, that sucks. Why did I get such a terrible second name? And she gets the cool one. And I'm like, man. So I said, tell your brother why his name, his middle name is so important and special. She smiled and said to him, because you, we are from the tribe of Levi. Mm. And you carry that name. Now, what's effectively happening is my son is learning the value of those genealogies. Yes. And... I'm going to start drilling into him that he'll memorize those weird genealogies, which to someone outside of Judah, they're like, what a waste of time. What are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> well, if you take away those genealogies, you know what you end up losing? You end up losing Judah. And if you lose yeah. Judah, you end up losing the tribe for the Messiah. What does that mean to a Gentile? I'd say, listen. Rather trip over those names. It doesn't matter if you can't spell them right. Just by reciting them, you are acting as a witness mm. to undergird not only that cross that your Jesus died on, but the tribe that Jesus came from yeah. that traces all the way back to Abraham. Reciting the genealogies is not meant to necessarily give every Gentile a warm, fuzzy feeling in their heart because it's not your ancestors. Okay, fine, yeah. it's not. But technically neither is Jesus in the flesh either. Yet you yeah. found a way to love him. Yeah. So why do I say Gentiles should be reading those genealogies? You're honoring God's word. It's not yeah. there by accident. It's fundamentally important. So rather trip over them than ignore them. Well, because and also gives... the, the meanings, right? The, the the meanings of the Hebrew names. I recall that um, I think it's in f it's the first Chronicles, and they they lined up the first ten or twelve names that are mentioned. Right? They just go straight into genealogies: Adam, Seth, Noah, Abraham, Je you know, right, all that down the down the line. The meanings of those names when you string them together in a sentence, right? means man appointed mortal sorrows, but the blessed God came down from heaven. Do we believe every word in the Bible from Genesis 1 to the end of Revelation, do we believe it's God's word? We yeah. do. So if we believe that, which words matter more? It's got to be important. Right. It has so, to. Right. So not even all of it on the same level, right? It doesn't all have to be a... But we all agree it has to all be God's word. So even, yeah. if I, even if I read the Gospels as a complete uneducated person, the least I can do in my worship is act as a witness and say, I'm about to read the word of God. When you read that, be grateful and say, thank you, Lord, that you are so honored to your word that you said Israel will be saved first. Your covenants yes. protect Israel first. And because you've stayed true to your word in doing that and followed its process without fail, I as a Gentile 
can rest assured that through this people Israel, I can trust you. Because yes. you've witnessed to me through your covenant with Israel that you will look after me. I've got an Orthodox Jewish friend and I, I sent her the link and I said, in case no one's told you lately, thank you for being you. Uh, look at this. If we can't, I mean, you're right. If, if God can't keep his word to Israel, why should I think he's going to keep his word to me? And moreover, uh, what Gentile culture can be compared? What, where could I go in this world that is ruled exclusively by Gentiles, populated by Gentiles, where there's no Jews, and expect to be treated better than I would be treated if I went and lived in Israel? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know that such a place exists or ever has.